Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. I welcome you to another episode of our series, As-Safaratul Kiram, Tajweed, the Art of Reciting the Qur'an. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has strongly encouraged us to recite the Qur'an in many, many authentic ahadith. Of the beautiful ahadith that have been narrated in this regard is the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Iqra'u al-Qur'ana, recite the Qur'an, because it will come as an intercessor on the Day of Judgment. In yet another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu said that for every single word of the Qur'an that we recite, we will be blessed with ten rewards from Allah Azza wa Jal. And then he emphasized, I am not saying that alif, lam, mim is one word. Rather, alif counts as one word, and lam counts as another word, and mim counts as yet a third word. In another beautiful hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that it will be said to the person or the companion of the Qur'an, meaning the one who memorized it and acted upon it, it will be said to him on the Day of Judgment, recite as you used to recite in this world. And for every verse that you recite, you will rise up one rank or one degree in paradise. And your station in paradise will be at the verse that you stop. In other words, as many verses as he has memorized and understood and acted upon, he will be told on the Day of Judgment to recite as he used to recite in this world. And for every verse he will rise up one degree in paradise until finally he finishes reciting what he has memorized of the Qur'an and his rank will be proportionate to the amount of Qur'an that he had memorized and acted upon. May Allah make us amongst these people on the Day of Judgment. Today's topic uh, is a very important topic. It is a topic called in Arabic Sifat al huruf or the characteristics of the letters. Now this is one of the most advanced topics of Tajweed and because this is an introductory class we will not be going into too much detail regarding the characteristics of the letters. Each letter is characterized by many different uh, characteristics and we are only going to discuss those which are the most essential in order to understand Tajweed and the, uh, the fact of the matter is that there are over 20 characteristics that are discussed by the ulama of Tajweed the scholars of Tajweed we will only discuss maybe 6 or 7 of them those which are the bare minimal essentials in order to pronounce uh, the Quran and to understand the rules of Tajweed properly the first characteristics uh, the first characteristic that we will discuss are the letters of isti'la Okay. Now what is the meaning of isti'la? Isti'la is the raising of the tongue to the roof of the mouth. So in order to help you memorize this, I have a picture of a wave here. Because your tongue will be raised up like the wave. This is the meaning of isti'la. Okay. So these are the letters that if you wish to pronounce them properly, you need to raise the entire tongue to the roof of the mouth. Okay. If you don't do so, the letter will not be pronounced properly. These are very important letters and they are seven in number. Okay? Uh, these seven letters are Kha, Sin, Bad, Ghain, Ta, Qaf, and Va. These are the seven letters. They are known as the letters of Isti'la. Isti'la, we said once again, is to raise the tongue to the roof of the mouth. In order to pronounce these letters, you must raise the entire tongue to the roof of the mouth. If you don't do so, the letters will not be pronounced properly. Now, uh, all the other letters are the opposite of this. You can call them the lowercase letters if you like. They are the letters where the tongue, or the entire tongue, maybe you have to move the tongue, but you don't have to move it entirely to the roof of the mouth. These are the letters, we, are, we call them huruf al-istifal, or the lowercase letters if you like, meaning the letters which the tongue is not raised uh, to the top of the mouth. Now, uh, you can memorize these seven letters by the phrase khusabaltin qiv. These are the same seven letters, but the scholars of Tajweed have just uh, place them like this as a mnemonic, as a memory trick to memorize them. And it is very important, you must memorize these letters because we will use them over and over again in other rules of Tajweed. So if someone asks you, what are the seven letters of Isti'la? You will say, they are the letters of Khussa, Dhaltin, Qiv. They are the letters of Khussa, Dhaltin, Qiv. Just keep on repeating this phrase until you have memorized these seven letters and as I said they will be used in future lessons so make sure that you know these seven letters and they are characterized as we said once again by the fact that the tongue has to go up to the roof of the mouth this is the first characteristic that we'll discuss that of isti'la the opposite of isti'la we said is istifal which means that the tongue or relatively maybe not the entire tongue maybe not uh, uh, the, the tongue in, in its uh, full length but 
relatively the tongue will not have to go to the roof of the mouth. The, the, all of the remaining 21 letters are letters of istifal or the lower letters. Another characteristic which is important are the letters of itbaq. Now the meaning of itbaq is to close up. So the, the letters of itbaq are those letters in which the entire mouth has to close up. It is as if it is puckered up from inside. And you make a type of, of, of uh, uh, if you like, a tunnel, if you like, of your mouth. Okay. So these are the letters of itbaq. And they are more specific than uh, the letters of isti'la. After you move your tongue up from the letters of isti'la, in order to uh, pronounce the letters of itbaq, you have to lower your tongue down after having raised them up. Okay. All of the letters of itbaq are also letters of isti'la. And they are four letters in number. The ta, the da, the sa, and the la. Now all of these four letters, you will notice to pronounce them properly, you have to make your tongue, in, if you like, into a type of circular tunnel. Or else you will not be able to pronounce it properly. And this, by the way, also tells you the difference between the ta and the ta. Remember that ta and the ta have the same makhraj, exact same area where they come from. Likewise, the seen and the sad. They have the exact same place where the letter comes from. What is the difference? The main difference Try to pronounce the ta and then the ta. What is the difference? Ta and ta. You find that your mouth has to form a type of tunnel, as we like, as we said, uh, as if the mouth has to close up, pucker up from inside. So this is the main difference between the seen and the saw, the ta and the ta, and so on and so forth. These are the four letters of itbaq. And you notice that they are part of the letters of isti'la. The letters of isti'la are seven. Four of those letters are letters of itbaq. In that not only do you have to move the tongue up to the roof of the mouth, you also have to cave in your mouth, to close in your mouth, to form a type of uh, cylinder. These are the letters of itbaq. And it is important to know them because in order to pronounce it properly, you have to, uh, as we said, make your mouth into a, a type of tunnel or close it up uh, very uh, circularly. Uh, obviously, all the other letters are not the letters of itbaq, so there are only four letters of itbaq, and the remaining uh, 24 letters are uh, not these letters. Uh, the next characteristic is a very important characteristic, and that is that of the qalqala, the letters of the qalqala. Okay? Now, the meaning of uh, qalqala is uh, the moving or shaking of the sound, and that's why I have this type of wave uh, drawn out when a, when a water drops uh, when a, a droplet of water falls it forms a type of wave similarly a qalqala is a wave a sound wave if you like it is an echo that is done on the letters of the qalqala uh, the letters of the qalqala in order to pronounce this uh, this moving or shaking it must have a sukoon on it you cannot pronounce a qalqala when there is a fatha or kasra or dhamma you cannot do this echoing it must only be done when the letter has a sukoon on it. What are the letters of the... Uh, oh, we, we must be careful yet before we mention the letters. We must be careful not to transform the qalqala into a fatha. And I'll explain that now. What are the letters of qalqala? There are the five letters of qalqala. The qaf, the ta, the ba, the jim, and the dal. And once again, the scholars of tajweed have c uh, conveniently uh, placed them in one word. Qutul bi jad. Qutul bi jad. If you keep on repeating this, qutul bi jad, you will memorize the letters of uh, the qalqala. Now, uh, let me give you an example uh, of the qalqala. We, we said firstly that the qalqala is a moving or shaking of the sound itself. Secondly, that it occurs only on a silent letter. So let us put a, 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 a sukun on the qaf, okay? And put an alif before it. Aqo. Aqo. Did you hear that echo right after the qaf? This is, this is the qalqala. Try with the ta. Alto. Alto. Likewise with the ba. Ab. Ab with the jim aj aj. Notice the aj this this qalq, this qalqala, this echo. This is what we're talking about. Likewise, the dal ad ad. Not careful not to transform into a fatha. Put a fatha on the qaf aqa aqa, which is different than a qalqala aqo. So it's a very uh, if you like precise difference, and it only comes through practice. Again, this is a very common mistake that when people try to produce a qalqala, they end up saying a fatha on the letter. And this is not uh, correct. The fatha is a separate uh, you know, sign, a separate vowel sign. You cannot uh, confuse the qalqala with the fatha. The qalqala basically is caused by the release of the sound after it was trapped because of the sukun. 
The sukun means there will be no fatha kasra dhamm on it, right? There will be no vowel on it. However, these five letters, you cannot just stop at the letter. You have to release that sound. Or else the letter will be eaten up. Suppose we did not have a qalqala. Let's try produ- producing uh, the sound of a silent qaf. You can't do it. Okay? It doesn't happen. You need the qalqala in order to tell the listener that there is a silent uh, letter of qalqala there. Ab, aj. If you don't have a qalqala, ab, aj, it doesn't come. The person will not know what you're saying. It, you're not, you don't even sound right. So the qalqala is essential in order to inform the listener that there is a silent letter there uh, that, uh, you know, uh, is of the letters of the qalqala. These are the five letters of the qalqala. To produce a qalqala on any other letter is a mistake. These are the only five letters of the qalqala. Any time uh, in any of the other letters there is a sukun, you don't do a qalqala. There is no need for a qalqala. Suppose the letter ta. The letter ta is not of the letters of the qalqala. You put a, fat, a sukun on it, at, at. You don't have an echoing sound. Whereas ab, ab, you have a strong echo there. Okay? So, likewise, for example, the sheen, ash, ash. We don't say ash. There is no qalqala. There is no need for a qalqala. Ash. Ash. However, the letters of the qalqala, once again, you must have the qalqala if you wish uh, the listener to know that there is a silent letter there uh, that you have pronounced. Now, the qalqalas, uh, they are not of one category. Some qalqalas or some echoes will be stronger than others depending on uh, where the letter occurs. If the letter occurs, if any of these letters occurs, obviously in a silent form, in the middle of a word, then the qalqala will be the lightest will be the lightest amount. If it occurs at the end of a word, notice a word, not a sentence, Mm -hmm. the end of a word, it will be a little bit stronger than that. Okay? And if uh, the qalqala occurs and the word has a shadda on it, you know a shadda means a double letter merged. Okay? If it has a shadda and you stopped on that shadda, then you must pronounce the qalqala even stronger than that. You must pronounce the qalqala even stronger than that to show that there is a silent shadda which you have not pronounced. So if you like, we can say that the qalqala is of three levels if you like. Okay? The lowest level, or the, the weakest level will occur when one of these five letters is silent and it occurs in the middle of a word. Following this, a little bit stronger, a little bit harsher, a little bit more of a reverberation of an echo will be when one of these letters occurs at, at the end of a word. At the end of a word. And the strongest qalqala, the one where you do the most vibration, the most echo, will be when there is a silent shadda. There is a shadda, but you stop there. You didn't move on. So in order to show the reader that there is a shadda, then you have to make a very strong uh, qalqala. Now, uh, open up uh, Surah Al-Masad. I will recite Surah Al-Masad and listen and follow along with me and see where the qalqalas occur and what level they are with. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تبت يدا أبي لهب وتب Okay, who can tell me where's the qalqala here? On the back Okay, what type of qalqala will this be? On which level will it be? The strongest, the strongest one, because there is a sukun on the back. Watab. Notice there was no qalqala on the first tabat. Why wasn't there a qalqala on that ba? Because there's, it's not, there's no sukun. There is a fatha on it. Exactly. Okay. Tabat yada abi watab. ما أغنى عنه ماله وما كسب. Where's the qalqala? كسب. Okay. What level of qalqala would this be? The second. The second level, meaning because the the ba has a sukun and it's at the end of a word. سيصل نار ذات لهب. Once again, the لهب. وَامْرَأَتُهُ حَمَّالَةَ الْحَطَبِ Once again, the حَطَبِ فِي جِيدِهَا حَبْلٌ مِّمَّ سَدِ Okay, there's two qalqalas here. Where are they? 
Habil, what type of Qalqal is this? The weakest type, yes. And the Masad would be of the second type. So notice the difference. Habilum, Habilum, and then Masad. So it's a slight more emphasis on the Masad because it's at the end of a word. So these are the letters of the Qalqala, the Qutubijad, and whenever you recite these letters with a sukoon on them, you must place the qalqala or else the letter will be eaten up, you will not pronounce the letter correctly and the listener will not know that there is a silent letter of the qalqala there and we said that they are of three levels and we gave their examples uh, in Surah Al-Masad. With this we come to the conclusion of today's episode, we hope to see you in our next episode, until next time, Assalamu Alaikum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh.